right, we are here. Facebook Live. Monday, live at 5, here from the from the vote living room. I bet that everyone's getting really familiar with this picture. Um, we got that from Ikea five years, six years ago when we moved into this place. It's hard to believe it's been six years, but we are just two months shy of the official six-month anniversary of being the past six months, yeah, six-year anniversary of being the pastors of Antioch Baptist Church. It's been an awesome ride, so praise God. Thank you for joining us tonight. I see we got some people starting to come up. We're going to sing a, a new song. I don't know if we've ever, I don't think we've ever done this actually at Antioch before. This song is called A Waymaker. It's one of my favorites, and um, I just think it speaks so well to what's going on in our world right now you know we need to remember that our god is a way maker he he can make a way where there is no way and he does when he shows up he changes things he changes atmospheres and he rebuilds broken lives and heals broken hearts so he is the way maker if you know it sing along if you don't know it then just you know just hum along pray as we sing it and i'll start off with a word of prayer Lord, we just thank you tonight that uh, you are the way maker. And even when we don't see it or feel it in our lives, Lord, you are always working. I just thank you, God, that you never take a day off. I thank you, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit is at work in the world, in our lives. Lord, I just pray that you'll help us to remember that you are the, the God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, you are the God of the impossible. So we just pray that you will continue. Lord, that you'll make a way in our time, in this time right now. Lord, make a way in our hearts for you to take more control. Lord, I just pray that you'll make a way in our, in our culture, in our society, in our world right now for healing, Lord, that you will work with the doctors and the scientists and the first responders, Lord, that you'll make a way, Lord, for there to be a cure, God, from this virus. Lord, I thank you that you already did make a way. For us to be saved, Lord, you you, you created a, a cure for sin 2,000 years ago when you shed your blood on the cross. We thank you for that. We just pray that you'll bless people tonight, that you'll encourage them, that you'll lift them up. Lord, we just pray that you'll restore, that you'll redeem. Do what only you can do in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord, we just thank you that that's who you are. Lord, that you are the light in the darkness. You are the way maker, Lord. Even when we don't see it or feel it, Lord, you are making room. You are making a way. You have a plan. You're in control. We thank you for that tonight. Thank you that you have revealed your heart to us. You have revealed your, yourself to us, your love to us. Lord, help us to live in the light of what you've revealed. Help us to live in the light of your word, of your revelation, so that we can have wisdom and peace and joy and love and every good and perfect thing that comes down from you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good job, girl. Woo! <laughs> family, all right. We got the, the whole family singing on that one. That's one of our favorites when we do... Uh, you know, that's one of our favorite songs to do as a family, to lift up the name of Jesus. I hope that you're doing that as a family uh, during this time. It's such a wonderful thing to do, to lift up the name of the Lord together. And um, I'm going to share with you tonight from one of my favorite psalms. It's Psalm chapter 19. I love this psalm because this psalm has to do with the perfect revelation of the Lord. The revelation of God. The, the, this is why I'm a Christian. There are a lot of religions... A lot of gods, but they're God like our God, like Yahweh, like Jehovah, the God of the Bible. No God like our God. The reason why our God is so unique is because our God has taken such care to reveal Himself to us. God has chosen to take His to take. You know, He could just hold His position there in heaven. He doesn't owe anybody anything. He doesn't need anybody. He doesn't need anything. He's self-existent, self-contained. He's all-knowing, all-powerful. And, and yet he has chosen to reveal himself to us. God has chosen to reveal himself to the human race. It's amazing to me. I just It's too amazing. It's too wonderful to, to fathom. I love what King David said when he said, What is a man or woman? What is mankind that you're mindful of them? And he says it uh, because it's just, it blows my mind. Like, God loves us. He loves you. He loves me. He's chosen to reveal himself to us. And this Psalm 19 shows us how God reveals himself. And, and God reveals himself through his creation. God reveals himself through his word. And God reveals himself to the human heart. It's a beautiful thing. Through creation, through his word, the human heart. This is what Psalm 19 says says that the heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies show the word. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. This is general revelation. God has revealed himself through what he has created. In, he, in them he has set a tabernacle, a place for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming to the chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of the heaven and its circuit is to the other end and there is nothing hidden from its heat. I love because, you know, people say that, that science and the Bible don't agree. Well, years before any of the scientific revelations were made, King David saw that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and that there is a circuit to the earth that the earth revolves and it's just a it, cool thing to see how even in the beginning even in the primitive uh, biblical times there was that understanding of creation there was that understanding and God has revealed himself he has shown the entire earth who he is by what he has made and it's such a beautiful thing if you haven't seen a sunset lately uh, stay up in just a couple hours and watch it if you haven't seen a sunrise in a long time, get up early uh, tomorrow morning and watch the sunrise. It is a beautiful, glorious day. It says it's like, a, it's like a man rejoicing when he's about to run a race or a bride that's coming out of his chamber to walk down the aisle. It's a beautiful, glorious, loving thing. Every day, God provides heat for us through the sun. He reveals himself through creation. Verse 7 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And the fear of the Lord is clean, 
enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine, and greater also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in them there is great reward. Verses 7 through 11, God's revealed himself through his word, his perfect word, his perfect Word, the law of the Lord in verse 7 is perfect. That's the Hebrew word Torah. The overall word, the collective word of God is, is perfect. It, it has no error. It is inerrant in its original, uh, in the original manuscripts. There was no mistakes. The, the, the fact that we have the Bible is a miracle. The fact that we have the Bible, with all the attempts that were made to destroy it, to burn it, to, uh, to ruin it, to corrupt it. It, it, it was all God's plan, a miracle that we have his word. And his, his, his word, his collective word, converts the soul. It's the only thing. The word of God is what, it, it not only is the word of God is alive, but the word of God gives life. It is life and it gives life. It converts and restores the soul. The testament of the Lord is sure, making wise. It's been awesome to couple of weeks because we've had people giving their testimonies live on Facebook. Well, God's given us a testimony. He's given us his word. He's given us his word to show us and to tell us who he is and what he has done and what he is going to do. And his testimony is sure. It means that it, it's verified. It's, it's, it's reliable. And it makes, the, it makes the simple wise. If you're looking for wisdom, it, you can be unintelligent. You can be a baby Christian somebody who's seeking any kind of spiritual enlightenment, come to this book right here. Come to the Holy Bible. And, and the testimony of God will give you wisdom and will show you the path to life. For the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. So here we see conversion, wisdom, and joy. Where does it all come from? It comes right here from the Word of God. The statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes are his, the Lord's command to the practical matters of life. Those are his statutes. How to handle the practical matters. If you're ever confused on how to handle a situation, the statutes of the Lord are right. Do it God's way. The practical things. Read back through the stories and the lives. God's given us so many examples so that we can follow him and we can live and we can do the practical things. God is in the practical aspects of life. And when you and when you follow his statutes and the practical things, it brings joy to the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes, bringing light to the eyes. The command, the specific, this is the commandment, the specific word of God to you. So it's amazing because we have this, this amazing word. We've got his law, we've got his testimony, we've got his statutes, we've got the, the whole word, the specific way of himself, the practical matters, but then you have the commandment of the Lord, God's specific commandment to you. Personally, this book, every time you read it, will say something new to you if you let it. And that commandment is going to be pure. That commandment is always going to lead you down a pure path. It's always going to lead you down something that is going to bring light to the eyes. It's going to enlighten your mind. It's going to bring life to it. It's going to restore uh, truth and, and clarity and understanding. So if you're ever in a dark place, follow the commandment of the Lord. Uh, like they, I love that. Frozen 2, we've been watching it as a family, and it's just such a simple statement, but it, it, it's, it's, it's contained right here in the Word. When you don't know what else to do, do the next right thing, the next commandment, the next specific thing God wants you to do from His Word. And the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. The thing that keeps your life clean is the reverence and the fear of the Lord, that awe of God, the fact that lose sight of his majesty and how big he is and how wonderful he is and it keeps you with a reverent awe struck view of of god that's what his does and his creation does that as well it it creates that awe wonder in your heart to think man a big god created all this and created me and and that's how we we live in the fear of the lord is an awesome thing because the fear of the Lord sets us free from the fear of man. It sets us free from the fear of the world. It's, it's not being afraid of God. It's being awesome. It's being awestruck in His presence. That's what the fear of the Lord is. And it sets us free from every other kind of fear. It leads to really understanding the grace and the love of God. 
It's to, it's to be desired more than gold. How this book. How bad do you want to know God's word? If your desire for the Bible isn't isn't greater than your desire for gold or treasure or earth. This is more valuable than any stimulus check. This is more valuable than any lottery winnings. More valuable than the nicest beach house on the nicest corner of the planet. Because the word of the Lord will last forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. And it's sweeter than the honey of the honeycomb. Man, nothing as as refreshing than, than the right word at the right in your in your life and and by this we're warned and and in keeping this there's great reward there's the reward of eternal life there's the reward of of a clear conscience there's the reward of integrity of character of knowing that you've done the right thing in the right situation man there's nothing more rewarding than that in this life and also in the next life keeping God is eternal salvation so verse 12 who can understand his errors Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep me back from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. See, God reveals himself through creation. God reveals himself through his word. And God reveals himself to the human heart. See, when you have an encounter with the Word of God, you see the sin that's in your life. It brings clarity to the areas of your life that you need to improve. It shows you the faults. And, and the thing is, is, it gives you an answer for that. It gives you a solution for that. It, it gives you a place to run to with guilt and with shame and with fear and with terror and with all the sins that you've ever committed. It gives you a place to run and be cleansed and freed from those things. Man, no, there's nothing better than standing in a court of law. And there's not going to be any better feeling than standing in the court of eternity and hearing not guilty because you've put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. This is what keeps us back. See, we have a hard time seeing our blind spots. We have a hard time seeing the areas that we stumble in. But God's word is a lamp and a light and a mirror. It shows us those things. Not, so that we can get them out of our life. See, God wants you to live up to the full potential that he's, created, that he's created for you. He wants you to be righteous and blameless in his sight. The only way anybody can do that is by his power. Because we all, like sheep, have gone astray. We've all turned our own ways. We've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But he, pre he prepared a way because he's the way maker. He prepared a way for us to be redeemed and that's through jesus christ and i love this verse 14 this is one of my life verses i hope that you'll make it one of your life verses make it one of your prayers lord let the words of my mouth the things that i say the things that i speak our words have power our words can create atmospheres our words can create feelings our words can create mindsets our words are so powerful lord let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, whatever the meditations of your heart are, whatever you're pondering in your heart, your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, whatever those things are, they are what generally uh, they are generally what create your words. So let the things that I say and let the motives and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Because if you get the right meditation and you get the right motive. Uh, when you speak the words, what you'll see is the way maker goes to work and makes way in your life. Lord, we want to be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, we know that you have a calling and a plan uh, for us. In your infinite wisdom and in your infinite sovereign plan for all of eternity, throughout all of history, Lord, you have carved out a place for each and every one of us. Help us, O oh God, to acknowledge what you've revealed about yourself. Lord, let it create awe, awestruck wonder in our hearts. Thank you for revealing yourself through your creation. Thank you for revealing yourself through your word. I thank you that your word is perfect. I thank you that your word is sure. I thank you that your word is right and pure and clean and true and righteous. And I thank you, O oh God, that your word has been given to us. Oh, what a treasure we have. Lord, forgive us for so often neglecting your word. 
Help us to remember that you've given it to us so that we can be clean, so that we can be pure, so that we can be wise, so that we can rejoice, and so that we can have relationship with you. The reason why you've revealed yourself to us is because you desire relationship with us. So Lord, let the, med- let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, we know that if they are, that we have good things ahead. Even in uncertain times, we have certain hope because of Jesus. Lord, we're thankful. We're grateful. Please continue to watch over us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Get into this book. Go back. Great chapter of Scripture to meditate on, Psalm 19. Think about all the different ways this book can be applied and revealed in your heart and in your life. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in.